Yo, what up, y'all? It's Black Friday. I am Monster Grove, the host of this show. Welcome to the show. C4CW casting 495 celebrities worldwide. If you are true fans of this show, then I, we, 495L4 as a whole, appreciates you. The whole of us as a network organization, we appreciate you. If you are true fans. So, today is obviously Friday, as I said. It is approximately 4.09 p.m. here on the east coast of the United States. And it is, uh, what would that be? 112522. Today's star date is 112522. Again, 112522. So, it's a little crisp out here. Yesterday was like an Indian summer day, which is odd because it keeps going back and forth, back and forth. It didn't happen like this in the past two years. It was just fucking cold when it got cold in November, but it's been going back and forth this year. And yesterday was like unseasonably warm, but it was okay. It wasn't too warm. It was all right. Now it's like the perfect fucking temperature for me. Because I am from the Pacific Northwest of the United States, originally. Oh yeah, from the EVT, Everett Washington, a.k.a. the EVT, a.k.a. Evil. you know, like the Ville, you go to the Ville, Evil, a.k.a. Evil City, yeah, you see what I'm saying, it's like, hey, you go into the Ville, but at the same time, the other word is that isn't spelled with two L's, the one that's spelled with one, evil, the city of evil, the city of evil, e town, ever rot, yeah, the ever rotten motherfucking city of evil, you see how you can like interchange all those, you know, just kind of play around with them, but ever it is no place to fucking play around, because it is a city of non-existence. So my book, a lot of you know, it's already out. Bit.ly forward slash deep in E-V-E-R-E-T-T one. That's the numeral one. I don't spell out one like O-N-E. It's just the number one. Bit.ly forward slash deep in Everett one. And yes, the book has been published. You can see the various episodes that are on Amazon. And... Chapter five is where things, well, we call them episodes now on Kindle. Episode five is where the shit fucking spirals out of control. So anyway, any who, any how, um, anyhow, <laughs> I haven't used that word in a long time. Um, it's kind of silly. Anyhow, um, but, but, but yes, I was an English teacher for 10 fucking years. And technically, I still am, because if you think about it, we have listeners in 50 plus countries from around the world. Yes, I said 50 with the plus sign after it, meaning more than 50. And English is not everyone's first language. So that being stated, uh, some people, they listen to the show because they are learning slang. You know what I'm saying, man? They don't want to necessarily hop on a flight right now and come and move to the United States for an extended period of time. However, they're thinking in the future, they might do something like that. So they listen to this show. We have a lot of listeners in India. Shout outs to India. And then the list goes on. Argentina, Brazil, you name it. Germany, France, Europe, Asia, different countries in Africa. So this show is now, I believe, and it's 30, like coming up on its 36th month. So we've been in business now for three years. That's the number after two. One, two, three years. And we've had tens of thousands of physical downloads. I'm not talking about regular streams. I'm talking about physical downloads. And um, I'm just out kind of getting some exercise here. That's why it sounds the way that it does. Probably hear some wind and shit. Um, hear some, I don't know, birds. <laughs> I haven't heard any birds today. It's, it's fucking cold. They're like roosting um, nesting and, uh, fucking should be hibernating and going south for the winter. 
But um, I did see a bee yesterday, and I was like, yo, what the fuck is a bee doing out here? It's motherfucking November, and today it's cold, so it was weird. Yesterday, like I said, was a summer day, but it's like, yo, what the fuck is this bee still doing? Like, get the fuck out of here, dude. It's the winter. Go somewhere. Kick rocks. Beat it. Scram. But, uh, yeah, so we have people who tune in so that they can learn the colloquialisms, the lingo, the slang, the non-standard English, and they can kind of get, you know, they can kind of follow my cadence and get the rhythm down about how to talk shit the way that I talk shit so that when they come to the United States, they can like have that like mental toughness about them. Like, yeah, man, I know the motherfucking, I know the motherfucking shit, man. I got the motherfucking lingo down, homie, homeboy. By the way, in California, sometimes they say homeboy, homeboy. It's like, bro, what? The word is home. It's not hom. And then the other one that they do is in Ebonics is cats will say, you know, like street slang. Cats will say shit like um, speak on that. And it's like, nah, bro, it's called have a conversation. You don't speak on it. That's just some shit you made up on the streets. I understand you want to talk about rappers like speaking on things. They're literally just talking. So you could just say talking about a subject. Um, and it sounds really weird to say, speak on that. It just sounds stupid. And I mean, in my fucking opinion, and then, uh, the other one that, uh, bothers me as well is when they say they want to pay, they want to pay homage. Okay. So there's no such word period. Never has been. The word is they, (laughs) oh my God. Okay. Let me think about this for a moment. So they want to, um, okay. So like if, if, if somebody is giving attribution to another person, like they're giving credit to someone, right? If, if they're, if they're, uh, saying that out of respect, they want to give credit to someone, right? Um, fuck, what is the abonics? What do they say? Whatever they say, it's wrong. Okay. That's, that's my point. And, and it sounds really fucking dumb. I'll have to think about it for a moment because I, I just kind of glitched. Um, I want to pay homage. Yeah, okay, that's, that's what it is. They use the, they say homage, just like this. some of them say homeboy, when it's clearly the word is homeboy. Well, they say, they say they want to pay homage, okay? The word is, you want to pay, oh, now see, man, how it's messing with my, now it's messing with my fucking mind. They want to pay homage want to pay homage um, homage homage they want to give i'm really gonna have to fucking think about this because man it's it's thrown me for a loop just now i'm glitching so hard and uh i've actually talked about this on on the the podcast before um homage pay homage 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 Oh, wow. Okay. Mandela effect. This is trippy. This is really fucking weird. So (laughs) I'll have to do some research. So back to the point of the show today, the, um, uh, uh, the book is out chapter or uh, I almost said chapter again. Episode five is where shit starts to spiral out of control up to that point. The book was relatively tame. I just simply describe the golden era and the age of innocence, as I call them, which is basically the same time frame. So it's not really them. It's one time. It was a period in time when uh, where I lived, things were safe back in the 1970s and 80s, relatively speaking. And um, Everett, Washington was a beautiful town to grow up in. There were, were plenty of things to do for kids played sports uh like every season you name a sport we did it racquetball think we didn't we actually played racquetball for those of you who were trying to like you know throw that curveball and uh no pun intended because we're talking about racquetball not baseball but my uncle actually um my cousin my cousin Rizzo who's in the book King Rizzo my cousin Rizzo and I we got into racquetball We used to see these dudes play it at the YMCA in the town that we're from. The YMCA. Anyway, um, 
In fact, they moved the YMCA from where it was historically traditionally located. And and it sounds crazy. Like if you knew where the YMCA used to be downtown Everett, like fixed downtown, you would walk in. There was this huge like board that had all the names of like the donors encrusted in it, like enshrined. And it was like all these massive like like people that have deep pockets, like people that own fucking skyscrapers type shit. And you, you'd see all these names of all these different people. Well, in the Mandela effect, I found out uh, a few days ago from uh, someone I went to school with. He told me they moved the YMCA. And I'm like, yo, what the fuck? It's not downtown Everett anymore. And he's like, nope. I said, yo, what the f- where the fuck did it go? I mean, if you saw this building, it would be the equivalent of of like moving the white house to some other location. It's like, what they moved the white house. Like when did this happen? So anyway, they moved the YMCA, they relocated it to the South, um, uh, part of town. So it's now in this on the South end of the city, which is really bizarre because like I said, if you knew this building, it would be the equivalent of moving the white house. The YMCA was this huge, massive structure, downtown Everett. And in fact, there was inside of the building, they built the new building. They built the, the before. The, okay. The YMCA that used to be downtown Everett for decades, decades, like, I don't know, fucking a hundred years or however long the YMCA has existed. There was a YMCA that was an older YMCA. And then they just built over the top when they built the modern one, the, the new one. So my cousin and I, we would be inside playing like on the different levels of the um the building because there was like the basketball court level there were like um there were there was like gymnastics there was like a level up top where they had like a sky track and you could run around on this like sky track thing um that was raised above like you know the 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 ground level and so like people would be playing basketball or doing gymnastics or whatever down below. And then above the like hoops, above the height of the like basketball hoops, there was a fucking track that you could run, right? But it was not modern in the sense of like a health club, fitness club now. It was like an old wooden track. That place was fucking haunted, man. Because like I said, there were parts of the YMCA that were modern, that were like new. But as you would go throughout the different various levels and floors of the YMCA, like down in the basement uh, the, the or the ground level. So there was like the ground level. And then even at the ground level, there was kind of like a little ramp that went down um, slightly like to, to a lower like subterranean level. And they had the men's locker room. And then they had like the old men's locker room from like way back when, like back in the 60s or 50s or some shit, right? And uh, when you were in the old men's locker room, like if you were exploring the fucking YMCA, you could you could go into these areas that were like dark. And you're like, yo, why is it dark over here? Nobody ever goes here. I've been coming to the YMCA for years and I've noticed that the lights always off over in this part of the like YMCA. And then my cousins and I, we started, you know, when we got old enough to start fucking doing all kinds of like breaking and entering, if you will, man, we fucking, uh, we started to do shit that we weren't supposed to do as kids, like at the YMCA is what I'm saying. Before we just followed the rules, but then we were like, we started to like sneak around and figure out that there was this old part of the YMCA that was like closed off to the public. And it was weird because in one area that, like I said, it was kind of shadowy, the wall went up, not all the way to the ceiling. It's like there was a wall, but just before it got to the ceiling, there were some inches where the wall was unfinished. And it's like, yo, that's fucking weird. They didn't finish the wall to the ceiling. And, and through that, through that like space, it was dark. So we brought flashlights with us. Uh, we're like, Hey, let's go explore that part, man. Let's bring some fucking flashlights and go see what the fuck is in that shit. So we did. And then like we boosted each other up. And like, I remember peering the very first time peering through and looking into 
the fucking old YMCA. Dude, that shit was ghostly. They had built a wall so that you couldn't see the old YMCA. There was this entire other YMCA inside of the YMCA. And I was like, you know, using my flashlight to look through this like space where, you know, you've got, you've got your wall going up to the ceiling, but then all of a sudden there's this like dark area where they, (laughs) and I'm looking through it with the flashlight and it was another, it was like another men's locker room, like a whole, it was like another men, another men's. Okay. I'm in a new men's locker room. And then there's this creepy area where people just never went. Cause it's like, it's, it's hard to explain, but there were like, there were areas of the YMCA where, yeah, there's a men's locker room, but then on another, on another floor, there's another men's locker room and it's like, and another men's locker room and the same for the women's locker rooms. Some of the, even, even some of the modern, um, uh, locker rooms, some of them, for whatever reason, most people never used it. I don't know why that is, but like most men, they, they used one particular, they used one particular locker room, like for the most part. And then like, I don't, again, I don't know why, maybe because it was more convenient. So then you'd go down, like you'd go down a level and now you're down on another level and you're like, yo, this looks like the one upstairs, but why are no men in here? Right. It was weird. They had all these fucking different locker rooms and shit. Some of them were used than others and some of them just not used at all. And so then, I mean, occasionally we would see some like old dude that would like have his like gym bag and he would be in one of those locker rooms that most people never used. We're like, oh, there's someone in here today. There's usually, and and maybe it's just because he didn't want to be, you know, I've had like health club memberships and it's like some gyms. You just get tired of being around people sometimes, man, in those gyms. You're just like, I want to work out by myself. I want to take a shower without any fucking weirdos around. You know what I mean? It's like, you're like, I I prefer that, like, I'm the only one here. Like, I used to have a gym membership at this club that was open 24 hours a day. And I would go there at night because I'm like, if I want to get on a machine and exercise, I don't want to wait for someone. I just want to go to the gym, do my workout, and not have to sit there and wait. Like, okay, now this guy's on the bench press. He's... How long is he going to be bench pressing for like two hours before I can bench press? So I would go, I'd get off work. I'd go there at night and then I could just do whatever machines that I wanted to take a shower. There's fucking, you know, and and at nighttime, it's like at, at the gym that I used to go to, those showers were pretty fucking nasty. But you see when they air quotes closed, they didn't really close. But when most people went home at a normal time at night, like 10 o'clock, 11 o'clock midnight, they would have the like last crew come in and clean the showers. So by the time I got there at like 1, 2 a.m., the showers were perfectly fucking clean. You know what I'm saying? For overnight for the following day because they have to clean the showers at night once most of the people have left the club. So I just come in when the showers were clean because if you came in during the day or the evening when people are getting off work, there's like fucking hundreds of people in that shit and it's gross. So the old YMCA, well, it's not old. I'm saying the older section of the YMCA where they had the um, like the old men's locker room that 99 percent of people never, ever used. Occasionally, there would like I said, there would be one dude in there with this gym bag. And it's like, oh, this is the first time I've ever seen someone in this old locker room. And then and then from that old locker room, like I said, there was this kind of like utility area where you would like go around this corner Right. And like if you were a janitor, that that would be like the area that you would go to. Right. So most of the people that use the club, they would never, first of all, go into that gym or I'm sorry, that locker room because it was an older locker room. And then inside of that older locker room, there was an area that kind of looked like off limits to the gym members because it was like a janitorial section or whatever. So you'd go around this corner And he'd start walking down this like pathway that looked like there was no end. Like it looked like it just kind of ended. And it's kind of like, yo, this is weird. What the fuck is this over here? And then, like I said, you'd look up and you'd see that the wall wasn't finished. And you're like, holy shit, this is a trip. Like, what is this? So that's where my cousin and I, we went and we like shinnied up the wall. And because we were we were kids, man, we were like, uh, 
fucking 11 or like 11 or 12 years old, maybe even younger. Well, we did go there up through high school, but we also went there when we were very young, like eight or nine years old. And uh, like we, we'd been going to the YMCA for years and years and years. And when we graduated from high school, there were dudes that we went to high school with that were like local basketball players and they'd fucking play at the YMCA in, into their 20s. And there were older dudes that were like senior guys that played basketball sometimes with those younger dudes. So you had all ages there, man. And um, but yeah, when we were, excuse me, when we were like, uh, what did I say, like 11 or 12 years old? That's when we uh, that's when we went to that area of the YMCA and we started to explore the old section of the YMCA with our flashlights and shit. And it was closed off to the public like they had built a structure so you could not see in there unless you went into that dark area with those flashlights and you looked over the wall because it was yet another men's locker room on the other side. They had it blocked off to the public and it looked like it was fucking haunted and shit, man. So there, like I said, you'd be, you'd be on a staircase, you'd go down a staircase, you'd turn a corner, boom, there's a swimming pool. You'd go around the corner, boom, there's another swimming pool. You'd go up to, you'd go up to one level, there would be a racquetball court. You'd go up to the next level. I'm talking about like from one story to the other story. They had all these different things on all these different stories of this building. I can't remember if the YMC was like five stories. That seems about right. It might've been a five story structure, but, uh, yeah, they they had some really weird stuff in there because, like I said, they had built the one building on top of the old building from the, like, 1950s, 60s. So it was two buildings in one, and it was bizarre. It was fucking bizarre. And um, you'd get this feeling, like, you'd be in, you'd be in this in this fucking old, like, this, these old sections of the YMCA where you're not supposed to be. And when you would peer into these different, like, areas and you could see the past... You really got the fucking feeling, man, that there were like souls in there or some shit. Like there was a presence, man. And there was an area upstairs in the racquetball courts. I've never been able to figure this out, man. But I seriously, truly, honestly believe that something inhabited that area. I don't fucking know. I can't really explain it. But okay, I had never gotten this feeling in my lifetime ever. And then one day, like, cause we used to do really fucking reckless shit and we would laugh about it. Like, ha ha ha, man, we just broke into that shit at the YMCA or whatever building we would go to colleges. There's a local college and we used to sneak into fucking different parts of the community college. We found a secret level, which was really weird to this day. I don't understand it. It's probably some government shit. And they use the community college, um, for, you know, dual purposes. It's like there's government shit going on there underground and people don't know. They think it's just a community college, man. We found this level in between the, on the elevator. Like you literally had to stop the elevator and then pry the fucking elevator open. And then there was a secret level. Okay. Inside the community college with full on room. It was so weird. They had filing cabinets, rooms, like, like there was like a hallway. It was like a mezzanine, but keep in mind, it wasn't listed on the elevator and you couldn't access it unless you fucking got on this elevator and stopped the elevator. We found it by accident and we looked at each other like, yo, what the fuck is this? So we used to go there and like every time we went there, somehow, some way, there was never anybody in that secret part of the community college. Um, we were, we were young, just like about the same age as like at the, uh, about the same age as we were when we were at the, um, uh, what was I saying? Uh, the YMCA. So we're breaking into shit back then as kids. Right. And we, uh, we were snoops, man. We would, we would, uh, we would snoop around. And then the, um, the, this one time that I'm up on the racquetball because my cousin and I, like I said, we used to play racquetball as well. So we had rackets and we would play racquetball. But one day I was like, yo, I've never been over here. Never been to the courts down there. And as I started to walk down this hallway, I noticed that there were these, um, these different racquetball courts that had their lights turned off. Well, it was one particular racquetball court, man, that 
like I, I'd go in and I and I knew how to like turn the little key, right? All right, so this is real shit, and I and I may have actually <laughs> podcast about this before, but it's a re iteration, possibly a reiteration. I, I may have actually talked about this before, probably not as in great detail, but this is all fucking true. This is a true story. So I'm on the level now with the fucking um, racket ball uh, courts, right? My cousin and I, we tended to play on one side of the building where uh, the courts were like, um, I mean, they were like, it was the area where most of the people played racquetball. So when you would go to visit the place, you would see that there were these particular racquetball courts that were like almost always occupied. And then occasionally my cousin and I were able to get in and get a game in because it was one of those YMCA's where it's in the inner city. So it's like, there are a lot of people there. Same with the fucking basketball um, courts and shit, because there's just so many people playing fucking games. So, you know, playing so many different basketball games, you'd you'd be on one of the levels, there's the basketball hoops, fucking all the basketball hoops are occupied. You you might be able to, like, find one in a corner and toss a ball up and down by yourself. But in terms of getting on to, like, play with 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 the people that were, like, engaged in the games already, it's like you had to wait in line, like, in a lot of cities, right? Well, the racquetball courts the same shit but there was a section on the other side of the building where there were these other racquetball courts that were all that were almost always and forever never occupied i never saw anyone go over there and as i got older i started to think like yo what the heck is over there right and so just like when we found that old part of the fucking we found that old part section of of the ymca where we took our flashlights well now now i'm wondering about this section of the fucking of the racquetball courts you have to understand this is a huge building and there are so many fucking floors with so many different things on each floor right so i'm like and, and and the other thing was like my cousin and i we had just gotten into racquetball it wasn't something that we had been doing for all the many years that we were at the YMCA. We only got into racquetball like when we were like, fuck, I don't know, man, like going on like maybe 13 years old or some shit, right? And, uh, but before that, like the racquetball section, we just thought of it as like, that's where the older gentlemen fucking played racquetball, right? Like we're kids, how the fuck, why are we gonna play? But the more we explored the YMCA and the more we would like see all the different shit, we were like, well, man, that racquetball fucking game shit looks dope. Let's fucking, uh, let's, let's start checking out some rackets down at the desk. And so then my uncle, he would be like, Hey, what did, what did you guys do today at the YMCA? You guys went right. And we're like, yeah, we played racquetball. He's like, Oh, you guys play racquetball? We're like, yeah, we checked out some rackets and shit. Well, he knew that we were excited about it. And like, cause he'd question us every day. Cause he was a responsible, you know, adult. And, uh, you know, uncle and, you know, the father of my, my cousin. So being my father, my cousin's father and being my uncle, he was like always checking up on us to make sure that we were like doing the right things in life. Right. So he just keep asking us. So what'd you guys do today? Play racquetball again? We're like, yeah, it was awesome. So on Christmas, he surprised us by buying us our own fucking like rackets and that shit was expensive back then man those were like professional fucking rackets and uh so then we really got into i mean we were like we were in it for a long time man and uh but then like i said at some juncture it's like one day i'm just like hey why don't people ever go down this hall like it just occurred to me i'm like why are people always I mean, it didn't, it wasn't just like it occurred to me just then, but I had thought about it on occasion. I'm like, huh, people still, for whatever reason, aren't down that hallway. I guess by the time we get here out of school or on a Saturday when school's out, I guess it's just dark over there and they prefer to be over here. So I got sneaky, my cousin and I, and we went into those racquetball courts that had the lights turned off. Um, we found a way, there was like a little key thing 
and we figured out how to put something in it and to twist it and to turn the lights on. And I know you're like, well, don't you just flip the switch when you want to go? These were different. This is what I'm trying to explain. We don't understand what these fucking racquetball courts were used for. We never, ever saw anyone playing them. One of them was kind of weird. It looked like it was like, it's hard to explain. Well, not, I guess it's not hard to, dis- to, to describe really. I mean, it just looked like it kind of had some structural issues and they had some materials in there. Like it was like, like being repaired in some way. Right. So we just stayed the fuck out of that one. But there was this other one that looked like it was normal, like it was just a normal, just like the other ones. But for some reason, nobody fucking ever went in there. The door opened. You could open the door and you could go inside and uh, you could flick. Wait. No, I think that's the thing is you couldn't turn on the light in there. Yeah, I think that's the thing that was the trip about it. Yeah, you could not turn on the light in this one particular racquetball court. And this is an enormous room. Like, this is a huge fucking room. Somehow, some way, I can't remember what it was. Oh, because of the window, the glass, right? The glass. Okay. Yeah, that's okay. That, that's what it was. Because I was like, how were we able to see in there in the dark? It's because the window... The, there was a window in it. Wait, no, this is did no, this one didn't. There, I can't remember exactly, but here's the deal. Here's what I'm I've been alluding to. You'd go into this fucking racquetball court, and you, there was something about it, man, that was fucking so terrifying. Like I can't. Like we were daredevils, and we used to do all kinds of bad shit that we weren't supposed to do. There was nothing in this racquetball court. It's literally a fucking racquetball court. But for some reason, I had a fuck. I picked up on a vibe about it. I mean, we had been in other racquetball courts and we closed the door and turn off, turn off the lights. But that fucking racquetball court, man, I sensed a presence there, man. I was young and didn't understand at the time. But in hindsight, like, and I tried to do this thing where... I would like go back there every day and I tried to challenge myself to get over the fear of this thing. But there was something that was so fucking dark about it. Like, I don't know. It's like it was inhabited by some fucking, I don't know, man. Like it's another space or some shit. Like, I don't want to go like with the alien, you know, concept or and be like, oh, yeah, it's when inhabited by an alien. I don't know why a fucking alien would want to inhabit that space. It's just a cube. It's just a fucking box that's dark and it's fucking supposed to be for racquetball. I mean, it doesn't look as I mean, I don't know what aliens think, but it doesn't look like aesthetically pleasant. It's a cube with like, you know what I'm saying? And, and it's like. And it, and it looks institutional. It's just fucking weird, man. There was something in that fucking, there was something in that racquetball court. And I would like tell myself, I'm like, okay, today I'm going to go to the fucking YMCA. And the first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to run up those stairs and I'm going to walk into that thing. And I'm going to confront whatever the fucking feeling is that I have, because I was telling myself like, it's illogical to be thinking when I'm, I'm like, this is illogical. This is in my head. I'm making this shit up. It's like, I can't have fears like this, man. Like I'm a fucking daredevil. I can't, I can't be having like, I I do like back then I was like, I do ninja shit. Like I'm, I'm a little ninja. Like, fuck this man. I, I, I creep into places and shit. Why would I be, man? I play racquetball. Why would I have a fear about this racquetball court? Nope. Every time I would get up to that door and I'd go to open it. Something was like, don't do it, dude. Don't go, don't go in there. Just don't fuck with this place. Get the fuck out of here. I wasn't hearing those words, but that's what my fucking gut feeling was telling me. And I don't know why. So, yeah, that was creepy and spooky. I don't know if y'all have ever had a situation where in your past there was a location like that that just made you feel like that. You know what I mean? There was just so dark of a feeling where you, you, you tried to be a fucking soldier and soldier up and just like deal with it. But every time you tried, there was a part of you that was instinctual, right? Instinctive. And just deep in that gut feeling that was like, no, don't fucking do it. 
You know what I'm saying? So, I don't know, man. Maybe that's a Vortal opening port. Oh, yes. And I forgot to tell you how there's more to the story. So, that was the place that I kind of considered, I don't want to say haunted, because I don't really get the feeling that that was what it was. But there was definitely some type of presence there. I'm not saying from like someone who is deceased or anything. I'm saying some otherworldly something was going on there, whether it's a being or an opening to some shit. You know how they say that there are those spaces. Have you guys ever heard of uh, have you guys ever heard of Internet black holes? There are literally quantum physicists who they discuss this. There are these there are these parts of cyberspace where information disappears and the National Security Agency doesn't even know where it goes because they are literally called information black holes. OK, OK. They are literally cyberspace. There are holes in in fucking cyberspace. We, the science community, assume that the data go into another universe where whatever happens and that's where the data go. Because it's like if the data are gone, well, they're no longer in our known universe. (laughs) If they're missing and they're literally not present. If, if, if you're sending data down the pathway, we, so in cybersecurity, we talk about the black box, right? So if you send the data into the vacuum of fucking space time and it just disappears, well, it's no longer in space time. It went to some other space time. It can't be non-existent because matter cannot be created nor destroyed. So it's not that the matter are destroyed. They can be transformed. Space time is malleable. These data objects, they go somewhere. You can't destroy them. The information still exists somewhere. And if it's not in our time space domain, then it's in some other fucking time space domain. So, yeah, um, they say that on Earth, there are spaces that do the same, kind of like the Bermuda Triangle or the Alaska Triangle. And uh, yes, there is an Alaska Triangle. I only found out about it in the past like two years and I'm not making this shit up. You can't make shit like this up. Why have we always known about the Bermuda Triangle, but 99% of you who are listening to this have never until just now, or maybe even recently when I found out about it, the same way I did the videos on YouTube, yeah, there is a motherfucking Alaska Triangle, and it is literally the same shit as the Bermuda Triangle. So it's like, huh? What? In all these documentaries of the past, when they were talking about the famous Bermuda Triangle, or I should say infamous Bermuda Triangle, where all these ships and people um, and planes and shit have disappeared, why have they never said, oh, and by the way, in addition to the Bermuda Triangle, this phenomenon taking place, (coughs) it happens in Alaska as well. And I could be wrong, but I think there's a place in China, too, called like the Devil's Triangle. Mm-hmm. 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 Or something very similar to that. I don't honestly know what the phenomenon is regarding the Devil's Triangle in China. What I do know is that um there is something called that. And don't quote me on this, but I believe it is in China. I don't know if it's a vortex. I don't know what it is, but the one in Alaska uh, is a place where humans disappear like every year. And it's and it's like it's literally listen, listen, it's not one or two people. It's a staggering number, like hundreds of people, hundreds, hundreds. Right. Why don't they talk about it on the news? Hey, this is Channel 4 News. Or channel 5 or 6 or 7. Channel 11. Whatever channel. Where are the news? So, looking at our annual statistics uh, regarding the Alaska Triangle. Sorry, I had to compose my... Because I was like, was it devil? Alaska? The, the Alaska Triangle. Well, um, Marguerite, what do you think about the 200 people that have gone missing Again this year, where do you think they go? Do you think that it's a satanic cult that disappears 200 people every year for satanic uh, ritual ritual sacrifice? Uh, 
well, <laughs> this is Marguerite's voice. It's supposed, well, um, <laughs> I did a man's voice. It's supposed to be a female voice. Um, well, Bob, that's a good question. We know that 200 to 2,000 people have mysteriously disappeared every year from this place. Do I think that it's a satanic cult that is behind the disappearance? Well, Bob, I would think that if hundreds of people every year are being ritually sacrificed at this location, and this has been going on for the past 50 years, that the FBI probably would have cracked the case by now. So I don't think it's a satanic uh, cult, um, Bob. I, I tend toward uh, alien abduction or some type of vortex or, 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 or both. I, I'll have to go with that, Bob. Oh, Marguerite, I, I agree with your analysis there. 200 to 2,000 human beings who mysteriously disappear from the same vanishing point we could put cameras, drones, sensors, lasers uh, there, and perhaps they are present, and our military just doesn't talk about it openly, but with all those things in place, lasers, drones, sensors, cameras, uh, it would seem strange that those people are still nonetheless disappearing at that same vanishing point every year, so those those technologies seem to be ineffective nonetheless. Where do they go? Why doesn't the military just send 50,000 troops into that zone and find out where it goes? Maybe into hyperspace into a black hole, perhaps? So there's some weird shit there, man. And I don't think the fucking military can do that because they know it's suicide. I think it's a real portal portal vortex and that's how we're unable to stop those people from disappearing every year. Uh, people who go to Alaska and they're traveling on foot and they just fucking have never heard because, of course, there's no there is there's no warning sign. Uh, excuse me. Um, I'm a sign. OK, <laughs> I'm a signpost. And um, you are a, a traveler on foot. I'm a hiker, an explorer. Yeah, do, can you read my fucking, can you read my shit? What, what, what does it tell you? Uh, Vortal portal opening ahead. Do not proceed. Do not proceed with caution. Simply do not proceed at all forward into the Vortal portal vortex because you will be disappeared. Hello, do you see me? Do you see me? Hiker, traveler, person on foot, explorer of the great wilderness north. Don't cross this line because poof, you will be disappeared. You think they got a fucking sign up? I don't think they do. Did were, were we were we taught this in history class? Like, hey, if you're considering becoming a homesteader in Alaska in the wild wilderness of the north, you need to understand something. There is a vanishing point where if you cross the line of demarcation, you will be vanished and disappeared into a black nexus of who knows where it goes, probably to some other star system universe. Uh, and you will not be returned to your planet place of origin. So, um, yeah, they never warned us about this, but yet here in lies the fucking conundrum. It still exists. Are, are they, <laughs> they don't want to tell people like they don't want to warn, you know, like th they don't want to put up signs and like blaring horns and sirens and like big fucking like flares, like do not go forward. You will not come back. If you do, you would think that they would be telling people on the news. Like this is channel news, nine evening news with Bob. Hey, I just want to let the world know that uh, we're coming up on those annual statistics again. Have you thought of moving to Alaska? Have you thought about going there for the first time on a hike, on a trek, on an excursion? Well, before you do, keep in mind and remember the advisory. If you go past the vanishing point, you will be vanished. Um, no, they don't warn us, so <laughs> I don't understand why. 
they have never told us about this place in Alaska where you should never, ever fucking go unless you're going to fucking be disappeared into a vortal. <laughs> I mean, listen, man, it's not really funny and you can't really make this shit up, man. So, and I just saw the thing the other day, I believe it was yesterday, where <clears throat> they were talking about how the, um, bah, 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 oh yeah, they were talking, the, the pilot who flew into the Bermuda Triangle, and he actually made it out, he's like the only one, it was an, it was an anomaly, he fucking was able to get out, skilled, very skilled pilot, I should know his name, I, I'd like to shake his hand, I mean, I remember the story when it broke originally how he was, you know, the way he described it is this. I don't want to take away ah, from anyone's. Sorry, I had to belch. I do that quite a bit on the show. And it's not for um, it's not slapstick comedy. It's not part of my shtick. It's not part of the script. It just happens. It's a human biological function. And I apologize in the societies where it's considered rude. However, in the societies where it's considered polite, I do not apologize. So my apology and my not apology. So, um, yeah. So point being pun intended point in space time being point being that, um, the Bermuda triangle story that a lot of people have never heard is this. There was some fucking kid. He's a punk. I think he was like, I don't know, 21 years old. I call him a kid because I'm 47. And he was like arguing with me on the internet, which, you know, I'm into intellectual debate, intellectual discourse. I think it's healthy, you know, for, you know, human beings to challenge each other intellectually. So this kid called me out and he was like, this is like 10 years ago. And he jumps up on a comment that I made on YouTube and he's like, you're fucking stupid. You t the Bermuda Triangle's been debunked. And I was like, uh, really, kid? How so? Please elaborate. I'd like, to re I'd like to see the data. In fact, I'd like to see the empirical data right now, motherfucker. It's been debunked. Your ass, huh, motherfucking cap artist. And he's like, what are you talking about? There's no such thing. It's not real. Um, and I was like, <laughs> so I immediately retorted. You could say retaliated. I'll say retort for the sense of, for the, for the, for the sake rather, not sense, not sense. The proper idiom is for the sake of intellectual discourse, which means that we're having a polite debate. It's a polite argument. We're not you know, supposed to be angry as we debate, argue our points respectively. So I'm like, okay, kid. Um, so you're saying that the like thousands of fucking aircrafts and naval vessels and just not naval. Oh yeah. There were been, there have been some military shit. Um, just ships, seagoing vessels. Okay. Boats motherfuckers i'm like yo okay kid how do you account for the thousands of boats and the thousands of fucking aircrafts and the thousands there of human beings occupying those ships crafts spaces how do you account for the thousands of people that have disappeared Oh, oh, well, it's not a real thing, man. That's a hoax. And I was like, dude, you're a stupid fucking punk. Shut up, youngster. You little runt, you. You puny little rascal runt. And this kid really genuinely thought, like I said, this like 21-year-old sucker MC he literally thought that the whole thing was made up because they got this whole culture of like, it's already been debunked. It's like, did you just get up with the Bermuda Triangle today? Okay, it, it appears that you're coming from the debunked website of the internet that some fucking clown runs. They think everything's debunked. The, the aliens, dude, you're stupid. Aliens don't exist. That theory's been debunked. And it's like, oh, so 
when you look out in the space time, the cosmos, like that's all an illusion and a hologram. And we're the only fucking rock. Like why even project that Ill, air quotes illusion? What's the point? So you saying we can't really get to the moon because the moon isn't real and it's just a piece of cardboard. It's just a pup. It's just a puppet show. Like, you know, there's a ball in the sky with the light bulb in it. So this is the only. OK. All right, kid. So Earth is flat, according to your fucking dumb, dumb head, dumb, dumb. And um, we've never been to the moon. It's just a light bulb inside of a fucking paper mache. Right. And uh, according to you and and uh, and then all of those stars and things that we see out in space, including with satellites and lasers and probes and spaceships that we made. Um, we're not really doing it. We, we don't really have spaceships. We just show the people that, hey, here's an illusion. We're going to send up a spacecraft shuttle. Yeah, from NASA. But NASA's just like a Hollywood stage and we're not really sending up rockets or ships or anything. Okay, so it's all – okay, so the moon is a light bulb with paper mache wrapped around it to make it look like a moon with a light inside of it. We don't really send rockets up in space. So, okay, so – uh, you don't believe that rockets go up into the air above a certain line? You don't You don't think rockets go – because it's a stage. Like NASA's pretending that we're going to space, but we're not because you don't think we can get past that, like, what you can see with your naked eye. Do you think that jet aircrafts are, are holographic um, projections as well? Do you think that the dude who's in the – or the woman, the chick, you think the dude or the chick that fucking pilots – um. Navy fighter pilots, I'm sorry, Navy, Navy, um, aircraft fighter, fighter craft. Do you think that those are holographic illusions too? Okay. So you think our government and our planet and our scientists and our military so dumb that we can only go into the sky with these machines, but we can't pass a certain level. Why? Because earth is flat, right? You dumb, dumb motherfucker. Right. And, and the moon is a light bulb with paper mache wrapped around it. It's just a puppet show. Uh Uh-huh. Okay, so then why are we on this rock? Is this is this rock a puppet show? Is that what it is? Is that is that what it is? Flat earther um, person who believes that the earth is flat. So how did we come to be here? If everything's an illusion and it's a and it's and it's in a hologram, okay. You're, you're saying everything that we're seeing in space, oh, the stars and the heavens and everything out there is just a it's a claymation. It's a stop frame motion programmed into our brains to make us believe that there's something there, but there isn't. Okay, so we're we're the only intelligence here. That's all just a program to like make us like we're fish in a fishbowl. And um, they're just showing us like a light show, but it's all like just some fucking light bright computer system. Look at the stars. There isn't the space. Isn't look, look at the fucking um, it's uh sundown and now we're gonna stargaze but it's not those aren't really stars it's just light bright to entertain the fish in the fish tank hi stars but they're not really there it's just made up to entertain the fish in the bowl okay so we're fish in the bowl um and we were supposedly um what's your word we evolved Oh, okay. Wow. Well, how did we evolve in an artificial world if it's not real? If you're saying that the fucking shit is is a hologram and it's made up and those stars aren't real and those planets aren't real and the moon isn't really there, well then, but we're the only real thing here and it's a puppet show? So who created the puppet show? Because if you're saying that it's an artificial construct, and that the moon is a fucking um, paper mache gag dangling from a fucking string puppet show um, with the light bulb inside of it. And you're saying that the earth is flat. It's not round and that the stars are made up. It's an illusion that's created by a computer program, right? Because it's an illusion. Well, if it's an illusion, someone created that illusion. Someone, someone put the light bright up there. And the, and the light bulb with the paper mache around it and called it the moon. So that would mean that the oceans um, and the, the, the marine life in it, they're not real either. 
because if space isn't real, then the ocean isn't real. It's just fake and it's made up and it's just um it's just a trick of the lights and cameras and the laser beams and the smoke and mirrors. So we didn't really evolve from creatures that crept out of the sea and then ultimately stood upright because evolution can't be if space isn't real, then evolution isn't real. Even if space is real, evolution still isn't real. So you're saying that the that the moon is a light bulb with paper mache wrapped around it. In French, it's called decoupage. Um, so it's decoupage. It's um, it's a it's a it's a puppet show. It's all puppetry and animatronics. And so we didn't really evolve from anything. And uh, so Earth is a stage. Like Shakespeare did confirm that it is a stage. He said all the world's a stage. Something to that effect. I'm pretty sure he said all the world's a stage. Don't quote me on that. Just quote Shakespeare, which I just did. Um, so why are we here? If we didn't evolve, then we were created without evolving. And we're on this puppet show. For who? For what? For what purpose? And don't say there isn't a purpose. And don't say there isn't a higher being. And don't say that this wasn't fucking created, you atheists, you. Because according to you, space isn't real, the stars aren't real, and the moon is a fucking light bulb wrapped in some type of motherfucking paper mache. It's just a ball dangling from a screen, from a string. It's a ball dangling for, from a string for us dumb puppet tronics down here. And the earth is flat <laughs> forever. You know, the earth is flat. Okay. Well, where does the flat end? You know, if the earth is a square, because that's what flat means, right? If the earth is geometrically flat, where's the ending of it? Huh? What flat earther? You can't wrap your brain around that part of it? You said the earth is flat. So if I just keep walking in my hypersonic fucking jet because we do have hypersonic technology now. So if I send my hypersonic missile, oh, is that an illusion? To, are you going to tell me that hypersonic technology is fake too? Is that also just a holographic illusion? So I doubt you're going to say something stupid like hypersonic technology doesn't really exist and it's just fabricated. So since you know that hypersonic technology – I mean unless you want to tell the most decorated military official to his face. I mean you know, train, combat, fucking theaters of war. I'm not talking about me. I've never been in the U.S. military ever as an enlisted personnel person, human being. I worked as a contractor for the Department of Defense – but I've never been in the military armed forces. I'm saying to you, if you want to take your flat earther story and go talk to someone's face who's been in theaters of war and is combat fucking operational and tell that human being that that person is delusional and that there is no such thing as a round earth and tell that person, Oh, hypersonic technology. It's made up. It's a hologram. Tell them that shit and see how they fucking feel about you. I'm asking you flat earther. You send an aircraft out along the flat earth. Uh, well, how, how does it come back? If it just goes in one direction, are you saying that if I if I send an aircraft out from my aerospace company and I have enough fuel for it to blast off like Elon Musk has like fuel to blast off rockets? Um, you're saying that if I send my craft in one direction, it, it'll never come back. It just keeps going somewhere. Well, where does it go? Where's the end of the earth? Where does the earth end? In your, in your flat earther literature, where does it end? If the earth is flat, there must be, there must be an end. Unless you're saying that the earth is infinite. Is that, is that what you're saying? The earth is infinite? It's an, okay, so, so you want me to believe that in this universe in which we live, we live on a two-dimensional plane that just goes on forever? Well, that's kind of weird because there's a place called um, the east and the west – and 
So if you go left or right, okay, there's Earth, and then there's everything we know to be Earth. So if Earth is flat, where's the wall? Like, where does it stop? Like, where, where does it end? Because you're saying the Earth is flat. Okay, well, the Earth is flat, so what's, what's after that? Is it another flat planet? You go from one flat planet to another? Or are you just saying that Earth is the only thing that's here and it's flat? Well, Earth, if, if Earth is, is flat and it's the only thing here, then you're saying it's infinite in both directions, Because that's the only logic behind what you're saying. If it's a flat fucking piece of cardboard, we know that you can go in the different directions of the cardboard surface, right? Have you ever explored the earth and found out what happens if you go the maximum distance on the piece of cardboard? Where do you end up? Do you end up back in the same place or do you end up at a wall? Because you don't make any fucking sense. If the earth is flat, which you say it is, and you go any one direction, the max, the maximum distance, where do you end up? Why don't you prove it? Why don't you do a video for the Internet where you take a camera and you show us on a road trip? Just take a road trip on your flat surface, flat earther, and go to the maximum distance of earth and prove that the earth is flat and that it ends on a flat surface at some point. And show us how far you can go on flat earth. Just show us how far you can go on flat earth. Show us the whole thing. I want to see the time lapse fucking footage. I want to see the time lapse footage of you going the maximum distance on flat earth. And and, and I also want for you to for, for you to explain what's at the end of the flat earth? What's at the end of it? What's at the end of your flat earth? Have, have you ever explored the end of your flat earth? Because you say earth is flat and you seem to have so much knowledge about this planet and its fucking topology, okay? The topology of the earth, the, the geometry of the earth, the mathematical dimensions of this earth. I want to see your documentary where you take your fucking flat earth cameras and you go to the maximum extent of this flat earth to show us, okay, here we are. We're on the flat earth and the earth is flat and we're continuing forward. We're on day 24 of our trek across flat earth. We're coming up to an area on flat earth that we'll call California. Now, we're going to board a naval vessel and we're going to go off into the Pacific. Mind you, flat earth. And we're going to keep continuing forward on flat earth until we encounter tomorrow a place called Hawaii. And then from Hawaii, we're going to encounter a place called Japan. And then from Japan, South Korea, North Korea, Russia. Then we are going to continue along flat earth from Russia into an area known as Europe. From Europe, we're then going to travel on the flat earth across a domain of flat earth known as the Atlantic Ocean. And from that point, we are going to reach the part of the flat earth known as Atlantis and New York and the East Coast of the United States. And from that point forward, we are going to be in America. Uh, the flat earth. It, OK, the flat earth ends. OK, on the square. Hmm. Hmm. It's flat. The surface is flat and we're moving in a straight line on this goddamn perfectly flat surface all right wait hold on we're all right we're in texas okay this is flat fuck now we're back at california god damn it well it ends somewhere it's flat and i swear to you that the earth is flat okay well where's the end of the earth then where 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 is earth the only thing that exists is that is that what you're saying Because if that's what you're trying to tell people, you should change your theory and call it something like Earth only existence theory, like that the Earth is the only thing that's real and there's nothing outside. Don't say that the Earth is flat, okay? if if you if if you don't even know how many planets there are. Like you gotta you gotta have a number of planets like in in relation to your theory to your flat earth theory, you have to estimate like something like in just in, in just the galaxy alone. So are you saying that is, is this what I'm understanding? 
Are you saying that you believe that the Earth is flat and at the same time you don't believe that there are other planets? Is that is that what it is? Oh, okay. So the, now there are not even any other planets. It's just it's just the Earth and it's flat. It has no end. It just loops back to the same flat Earth. Yeah, that totally makes sense, dude. So that's weird. So that means that in that kind of theory, huh, how was this designed by by who for what? Somebody just created a thing that's a box that just is flat and just loops back to what it is. Oh, it's not even a box. We're just two-dimensional beings. Hmm, that's weird. Well, how does all this information process if we're only two-dimensional, man? Because in order for information to process, you need multiple dimensions beyond two. Do, do you understand that? Like for information to travel to you um, in the way that it does and for you to visually and, you know, sensorily process it, there need to be more than two dimensions. So I'm trying to understand what you flat earthers are saying. I, I'm not really. I'm just I'm playing along with your fucking stupid ass fake ass theory. But um, so the earth is flat. Well, where does it end? OK, and if you tell me where it ends, then I want you to tell me about the other planets. Are they also flat? Are all the planets fucking flat in this universe of ours? Because everything you have said makes absolutely no fucking goddamn fucking sense.